Welcome to Jill on Money, powered by The Compound. I am Jill Schlesinger. I'm joined by my co-host, Mark Talercio. He's also the executive producer, but this is the show when he doesn't have to do anything except look pretty. You do look pretty. Hello, Jill. Hello, Mark. How are you doing today? Uh, I am well. You, uh, I'm just talking like this. I'm thinking you're going to London soon, aren't you? Soonish. Yeah. Soonish, right. Exactly. So am I. Oh, are we going to be there at the same time? No. I'm going mid-April. No. Different time. I don't like to tell people exactly when I'm away. I, I know. Or you really don't like to say where you're going. Either. I know. I was I was very, very I, secretive. I know. Well, sometimes I- Now I, that you're back, you still haven't even told people where you went. Oh, I was in South Africa for a week, and uh, that was a long flight. You know when you get on the plane, and on the way down, it was great. It's like 13 and a half hours. I'm like, no big deal. But then we got back on to come home. Yeah. 15 and a half hours. I was like, oh, brother. But watched a lot of movies, so mm-hmm. that was good. Uh, and I ended up sleeping, so it was okay. Hey, I got this new watch, this thing. What is that? That's quite, it's like quite a garment. chunky. It's a garment. It's chunky. And my mother would kill me if she saw me wearing this on the air. But um, what it does is it actually tracks your sleep, mm. which I find very interesting. So when I was, I was like, I slept on the plane. I feel great. And it says quality of sleep, poor. 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 Because you're up all the time. Yeah, basically. but you would take poor over none. Zero, right. exactly. Which is a long way of saying that uh, rich or poor, it's nice to have money. So if you can fly with a flat bed in first or business class, it's much better. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Well, well. Uh, you know, my favorite, my favorite favorite is if you fly to the Far East and you go Cathay Pacific. They've got beautiful, like real, like flat, beautiful cushiony, yummy. Mm. This is okay. So it's the, all right. So this is the this is the rub. When we go to London, you know, Amanda's going for work. Yeah. So she she's flying first. business class. Yeah. Theo you're, and Theo and I, you know, back of the plane. Poor schleps in the back of the yeah, plane. Yeah. Back of the but you're very small. So I mean like for Theo it doesn't matter. Mm. And you also, you can sleep anywhere, can't you? But one of these days I would like to experience, you know. You've never? One time for work. I flew from uh, Phoenix to Hawaii first class. That's a short ride. What is I, that? It was like six, I don't know. Oh my God. It's like flying from here it's to the California. the best thing ever. Um, it really is. It, it's like the reason to have money is to have a pampering like that. Although some people I know who have a lot of money are not willing to pay up for it. They're just like, oh, who cares? It's a terrible experience being in an airplane no matter what. Either way. Right. I don't know. I like it. Uh, gang, this is not a travel show. If you've got a financial question, you want to learn how to actually travel business or first class <laughs> or whether it's worth it. Yes. Um, Give us a holler. Go to jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Let us know what's going on. And we would be happy to chat with you. While you're there, so many things to consider. The free weekly newsletter. How are our newsletter subscriptions, Mark? They always are trending up. I like up. And also we have Jill on Money Live, which you also said has been trending up, right? Yeah. That's so exciting. So 35 bucks, we get you get four quarterly webinars. You get special bonus content. You're part of like the cool kid community, <laughs> or the maniacs who really do the jillionaires. Jillionaires. The jillionaires. Check it out. Jill on Money Live. Okay, today we're talking to Regina and Dave, and they've been very patient. They are on vacation and talking to us, Mark. So let's let's make this worth their while. Hi guys, how are you? Good. Hello. How are you? Great. What's going on? What can we do for you? Well, we're calling it, or the reason we contacted you, Jill, we love your show. And we, Dave is retiring. Oh, exciting. So he looks way too young to be retiring, but he is retiring. And so 35 years working with the Department of Human Services of Pennsylvania. Right. I'm getting ready to retire. So, Mm -hmm. ooh, that sounds like a lot of options. Hold on a second. That sounds like a job that has a pension. Yes, it does. Okay. A defined pension. I love that. So, um, how much were you earning before retirement, Dave? I'd say almost 90. Okay. And Regina, are you also working? Yes. How much do you earn? Uh, 85. And then with bonuses, close to 90. Okay, great. That's awesome. And is that, that combined income for you guys good? Like, feel comfortable? Everything's rocking and rolling? You feel in a good sit- situation cash flow-wise? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We have no. We really have no debt. Ooh, so. like and that. we also have a rental property. Ooh. That, uh, <laughs> the gross is about three thousand a month. Oh, amazing! Well, how much do you figure you guys spend on a monthly basis? I would say to do what we wanted to yeah. and not have to like really yeah. um, keep our belts tight, like maybe six thousand a month. Amazing. That's good. Mm -hmm. And Dave, what will your pension benefit be when you retire? 
Well, and that's why we were asking your help with, because there's some options to where, um, that where I would just get the pension or I can get a reduced pension where Regina would continue to get the pension as well. So it could range anywhere from up to over a little over 6,000 a month to as low as, you know, at least the ones I'm looking at around 5,000 a month. Either way, you're good. You're great. Yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm already psyched for you guys. So the five grand a month would be a joint and 100% survivor, meaning that five grand a month is usually with the low end would be you get this pension day for your whole life, as well as your wife who also will get that for her whole life. Is that about right? Yeah, that's correct. Great. And that would be around five grand a month? Yeah, uh, 5,300, 5,300, yeah. yes. Amazing. And this is just the pension. What other money do you guys have in retirement assets? So you have the rental income, which is a three grand a month gross. We have a pension benefit. Um, what have you saved? Well, I have about uh, 300,000 in uh, a deferred compensation. And I started that back when I started with the state. But a lot of that is traditional. Okay. So it's about 95 or around 97%, I think, is traditional until I was able to then start contributing through a Roth. Right. And then I also have just a little, another Roth of about 20. Okay. And then Regina. I'm looking at my assets here right now, <laughs> Joe, because I pulled them up on screen just to make sure we no, have them. You could say some of yours. Yeah. Okay. So. A traditional Roth IRA of seventeen thousand, mm -hmm. uh, or a traditional IRA, excuse me. And then I have Roth IRA of about eighty five thousand, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then we have about seventy. It's about seventy eight now, or seventy five in a in emergency fund, liquid like money market. Great cash, great. Do you and and yeah. um, I one thing I forgot to ask. How old are you guys? I'm 57 and she's 56. And we see they're nice and young. And yeah. Regina, will you continue to work after your sloth of a husband retires? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he swears he's going to take care of I'll me. Make sure <laughs> things done around the house. Yeah, you better, honey, do. Honey, do yeah. this. Honey, do that. But it's, how much longer do you think you want to work, Regina? Well, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking five, six years anyway, because it's, I can work remote so I can still travel. I have decent time off and I can work from somewhere else if we want to do things. That's I great. I can't imagine never working. I'm sure I'll do something down the road. Okay. That's fair enough. And do you guys own a home? Yes. How much would you say that house is worth? I'd say 325, 300, somewhere around there. And you said there's no mortgage because you said we have no debt, right? Right. Correct. Okay. How much is the rental property worth? Conservatively, so two seventy-five, I would say, mm -hmm. and also no mortgage on that. Correct. No. Okay, so on the three grand a month gross, what do you guys net on the rental property? Well, the last few years we've been really trying to do a lot of work there, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. prior to that, I would say we were netting two thirds of that. Whereas the last three years, we were really putting money into it. And we basically, it was like a, pretty much a wash the last three years. But right. is that, is that period of spending now over? Yeah, I would it's say. It's coming to an end yes. so that we can yes. just, you know, keep the money coming in. And, and that way, um, you know, it stays with inflation. Yeah. So, you know, the nice thing about rental properties is we'll always have it. Stay yes, with inflation. absolutely. And Regina, are you a full-time employee? Are you a contractor? What's your situation now? Full time. Uh huh. And so, are you putting money into retirement, going f like as in a in a in a four hundred one k or is that right? Yeah, they do a six percent match. So I'm doing that full six percent. Okay, great. You guys have kids that are grown, or what's going on with that? Mm -hmm. Yes, two daughters. Uh huh. Are they one's on their 32, own? One's thirty one. Oh, that sounds like people people who were actually launched. Do they? Do you have yes. to help them out? Nope. No, <gasps> oh my God, Mark! Finally, we, don't have to. we we do sometimes. Oh, we don't have to. all right. Um, what's the game plan here, guys? Like, you know, you're in good shape. What do you? What's your concern about why you contacted us? Well, I guess I just wanted to make sure there's also what they call present day value to where that they would put. It's a little over a million to where if for some reason Regina and I both pass away. 
prior to using the amount that I put into it and this this present value, then the children would get the remainder. And it's actually the same amount. It's about that 5,300. The only time it increases would be where you get up to the 6,000 as to where if I passed away and I used up, um, because you can contribute a certain amount of money. I did. So I have about, I'd say 194,000 in this defined pension. And then of course the state puts in too. So, but once I use that amount up, uh, those higher amounts, then, the, you know, your spouse wouldn't get any, but I didn't know if I should, if I should even include the kids since it's about the same amount if we both die prior to using that amount. I mean, I don't know, Mark, what do you think of this? Like just in terms of the different pension options, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? I'm not really not factoring the kids into, I'm more concerned with, you know, getting the full survivorship for his wife. That's that's really my priority because it's not it's not even that big of a haircut. So, yeah, I mean, usually what we'll do is we'll say, OK, what do you need to live on? That's what we always start with when it comes to retirement. Right. And you guys are very clear that your expenses are around six grand a month. So that's huge because what I look at is, well, then I don't necessarily have to maximize the pension necessarily. I have to make sure you guys are both covered because Regina, you know, obviously women have longer life expectancies. So the, the the theory being, if you're not taking such a huge haircut on the pension itself, say, let's say it's 6,100 to 5,300, you say, okay, we're both covered $5,300 a month. And then we have a couple thousand dollars from the rental property. And we're not even talking about social security at that point. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So right. you guys or are in, uh, right. And so you, you guys are in amazing shape. So in, when we look at pension benefits, what we try to do is almost take the the more conservative approach, instead of maxing out and looking at your numbers and saying, okay, Dave can get 6,000. Like, well, I'm not giving up that much to have the security of having both of you covered. I'm not sure that the kids part of it is all that relevant because I don't know, like what is the likelihood that you guys are both, have both passed away before that that threshold is reached. I don't know. I think it's a low probability and the kids are going to get the house and the comp and the, the you know, they're going to be a lot of stuff here. So it doesn't seem to me like the greatest, it doesn't, I, I wouldn't worry about the kids. It's one thing if you're like, have very young children, you know, but right. you have kids who are established already. So it doesn't seem like a huge push on that. Have you guys, um, have you been thinking about you know, I, we're talking to you, you're on vacation. Have you thought about anything else that you want to do in terms of we want to actually keep our home or we want to downsize our home? We want to move to a different part of the country. Is there some part of your game plan that would encompass that? We would like, I would like to maybe live somewhere. Like I wouldn't mind moving because we're living in a low cost of living area, but it's not, there's not much to do. Um, so <laughs> I mean, it doesn't cost much, but there's a reason it doesn't cost much. But um, so it would be nice to maybe move to an area that's a little more expensive. And if that meant taking out, you know, we, we might have to take like a mortgage, you know, if we were to do that. And I'm thinking if we did like a hundred thousand mortgage, um, would that make sense? Or it could or be what, 200, which I don't really, or, you know, would that I'm make sense? Well, I, really I mean, yeah, it makes sense if mortgage rates are back at three or 4%, not at nine or eight, right. you know? So I think that it depends where, what I always recommend is no matter what, before you pull the trigger on doing something like that, that you rent that you feel like, oh, I'm going to rent first. I'm going to make sure this is a place we want to be. And we focus on whether or not that's the right place for you. And maybe renting is the better idea. I mean, maybe if you said, well, I don't know where your two kids are, but you know, we, we'd like to rent someplace near them or try this out or try that out and not give up your, your primary residence until you're clear that you want to be in a specific place. Because Mark, how would you feel if all of a sudden they had a $200,000 mortgage? Well, that changes things dramatically. Right now, everything is uh, easy peasy, very comfortable. Right. So I'm right. more inclined to say, if that's something you want to do, I it may be that like, hey, Regina, in five years, you're like, okay, now I really want to move or I want to go someplace else. And I say, okay, well, as long as you two of you can make a little bit of money extra on the side, 
then maybe that does make sense. But for where you are right now, you know, when we look at your situation, if you took out, you know, you don't have that much money in savings. It's that pension that's really the the bulk of your security for your retirement that until we, unless I saw that mortgage rates came down or that you guys are like very hell bent on moving someplace and maybe renting for a while, that maybe that doesn't happen with the mortgage until you have social security checks. Because have you looked at your future social security benefit for you guys? I have. Mm-hmm. What do you got there? I'd have to look at it, but it's, I have it here, but it's a few thousand too. Right. Like if you guys had another five, six thousand dollars and you said, hey, that'll pay the freight of a mortgage or mortgage rates are lower. Yeah, I'm much more inclined, but like plowing through a hundred or 200,000 of your deferred comp, Ugh, or that, or they sell what they sell their current place. Yeah, and, but if you know. they sell their current right. place, even if you sold your current place, what you're saying is you'd move to a higher cost of living place yeah, exactly. where it would require so maybe a mortgage. Maybe we'd be better to rent. And I didn't yeah. want to sell the rental because you know normally it provides a good bit of income. The last few years it's been a wash, but normally that provide then that's done. That income is done. It's the one. Show. Well, put it this way: if if you discover you're like, I'm going to make this up. Uh, I want to move to the Southeast and it would cost us $600,000 to be in the place that we really want to be. Mortgage rates are still high. We we are willing to forego our rental income so that we could be in the place we want to live for the next 30 years. Like you, But you have to come up with that game plan of like, oh my God, this is the place. You rent first, you try it out, you see how it goes before you sell anything. And then maybe you get back in touch with us and maybe we're like, you know what? Pull the trigger, get rid of the rental property, get rid of this, move into the place you want to be. This makes sense. Or, hey, you know what? Mortgage rates are back down. We're in a terrible recession, God forbid, but okay, that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. We're in a terrible right. recession. We can get a 4% mortgage. It makes sense. We'll have our social security. Then it might work. But today, knowing what we know, I think that the easiest answer to your question is take the lower amount that covers both of your lives for the pension, stay put in the home until you really are sure that you want to make, you want to make a move. And, you know, Regina, you're a workhorse, keep working as as long as that is happening for you and keep stockpiling some cash. I'm less interested in you guys, you know, putting money away in a traditional retirement account, use a Roth use money outside of that if you want to. But like, I'm very clear, you're in great shape right now. The kids are going to be fine. You help them out. You've gotten them this. Yeah, you know, once you get to their 30s, they got to be on their own. Look, 30s, says, 20s. You know, listen, Mark, you just stop <laughs> That's right my now. hope. <laughs> I can only hope. That's why you only had one kid. Um, but I think that you're in good shape. Now, last couple of questions for you guys. Do you have your estate planning done? Yes. Okay, great. And do you feel comfortable, like, as you move forward, Dave, will you have health care through the state? Yes. yes. Actually, I'll have health care, you know, full medical and prescription. The only thing we won't have is, is dental uh, and, vision. and vision, but that's minimal. And where she works, she could easily pick that up. And right. then Regina also has that uh, that same coverage through my work. I'm Amazing. for his lifetime. Amazing. So what are you what are you going to do? Lifetime. What are you going to do with Regina's salary? I mean, yeah. you guys are covered. Yeah. What do we got? What are we going to do with all that money? That's what maybe rent. Maybe we rent other places instead of buy so that if we want to go somewhere cuz I do want to go somewhere where I can do things. Yeah, try before you buy. That's what I would say. Try before you buy. Use that money and um where should we have them go? And well, that's try? what I was going to say. Like wh- you want to do things. What do you want to do? Where are you going like, to go? You want to come to New York City? Yeah, what do you want to do? Yeah, come to New York. Rent in New York. We co- we we used to come there a lot. We used to come there a lot. And lately we've been just trying to get away from the cold for a little oh. bit just mm. to go somewhere. I want to go to London and I figured I'll just work from there as part of the time when I'm there, you know. We love that plan. Check that out. We love that game mm-hmm. plan. Well, I mean, I think if you can work from wherever and you have that flexibility, keep working. Don't and and by the way, you might find five years from now, you're like, well, I'm still working. I'm still happy. And there's nothing wrong with it. Keep working. Keep working as long as you can. Like, that's a great thing. As long as you're happy in that profession. But I think you guys are- I'm I'm sure I will too. You know, he says that, Mark. I don't believe him. (laughs) He doesn't have to if he doesn't want to. I know. I know. He's already 
already done it for so many years. And I have one other question. Should we, I've heard about a revocable trust because we have these properties. Yeah. Um, Is that a good thing? Well, I don't think you really need a revocable trust. A revocable trust just means it's changeable. It's a way to pass property. Now you own these properties jointly. Um, if you were to put the house into a revocable trust, the trust will own the property upon your death. But it's not that big a deal. You're not, you don't have a huge estate tax issue. I don't think that it's necessary as long as you have okay. a will, a power of attorney and a healthcare proxy and your accounts are cleaned up and your beneficiaries are each other, then you're fine. You should be absolutely fine. And when your kids inherit your property in the future, they will receive what's called a step up in cost basis. The property will, it would be as if they acquired the property at the valuation on the date of your death. So it's not as if you say, oh, okay, I bought my $325,000 house for $15,000. They, they don't care about that. It's upon death, when you when they receive that property, it's as if they bought it at whatever that value is at the day of your death. So I don't think you need a revocable trust. I think, you know, unless something changes dramatically in the estate tax law. But as long as that's an up-to-date document, I'm good with that. Okay. And I also had another question. Yes. I also had a question. I also contributed to this defined benefit plan. I have like 195000 and you do have the option to actually pull that out and invest that elsewhere. Uh, but, you know, I just didn't know if I should keep it in or not. I My thinking is that, you know, the state is managing so much money that they're going to be making sure they get a decent interest. Well, put it this to- way. They have a promise that they make to you. And that's the beauty of a pension. And that promise comes no matter what. Like once you're retired, they're not going to screw around with it. And yes, the newer uh, employees probably are not going to have a pension that's as as um, robust as your current one. But I, I am not, I think that you're sort of like, put yourself, why put myself on the hook to deliver these returns when the state's on the hook right now? And it's a guarantee. So I wouldn't worry about that. I don't feel, I feel like that's a little bit of a sucker bet. Like, yeah, like, let me take that money and I'll invest it. Like you can have fun with your defined, deferred comp. You can have fun with your Roth. You can invest it because you know, you have that $5,300 every single month coming in. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. We can get riskier with that. If you want. I mean, you don't need to either. Okay. All right. You guys are in great shape. Go find your, go move to London for a year or three months. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. And rent. <laughs> hey gang, are you wondering about a rent versus own? Are you looking at your off ramp? Are you have a pension? Are you lucky enough to have a pension and want to know how to actually choose the right option for you? Give us a holler. Go to jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Tell us what's going on. And of course, please, please, please check the box if you want to join us via video or audio. We will get you on the air. When I say we, Mark, you will do everything, right? Yes, ma'am. Very good. While you're on the website, check out all of our content. It lives there. And you can subscribe to our podcast. You can actually subscribe and like us here on YouTube. We are so grateful for that. We want to thank Duncan and John and Daniel and everyone at The Compound for helping us put this show together. They are the best. Don't forget to do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thanks for watching us. Thanks for listening to us. And we'll talk to you next time.